Hello and welcome to another high scoring video. In this one, we're going to be playing Zek Carry. Not because I think it's a top tier comp, but recently a viewer asked to see the highlights, so here it is. We're going to be playing Zek cold down the right hand side, which is quite unusual. Typically, when I've high scored, I've gone uh, much more aggressive on the sharp shadow build. So, this will be quite fun. I also typically use Lyre as my support character, but in this case, we're going to try out Reginald. Again, something a little bit different. So with that in mind, let's get into the divinations, the decks, the perks, and the pathing. For divinations, we rolled 11 fast divinations. On the first one, we took a malicious eye on Zek. We took a trace, a scroll of speed on Cornelius, and a chasse on Zek. We took an ice lance on Zek. We took a detection on Andrin, a rain on Cornelius, and an unstable power on Zek. We took a chant of initiative on Andrin. We took a Frost Nova on Zek. We took a Flash Heal on Reginald. We took an upgraded Vigilance, a Corrupted Curse of Exhaustion, and a Scry. Here we took Flash Heal on Reginald. We took an upgraded Detection. And that's everything from here. We took an upgraded Vigilance, an upgraded Flash Heal. And we finished things off with an upgraded Trace, a Scroll of Speed, a Fanaticism on Reginald, and an Ice Lance on Zek. Here we are about to head out of Act 1 Town, so let's cover the aim plan. Uh, Andrin's job is quite simple. We simply need to get a Chance of Initiative off on Cornelius and an Expert Tracker. Uh, almost always on Cornelius, sometimes on, on Zek. With any spare energy with Andrin, we'll be trying to launch uh, some detections out there, an uproot, and occasionally a chant of initiative on Reginald, uh, if we have the energy to do it. In order to deck manipulate, we're playing Trace Trace, as well as Vigilance Vigilance for card draw. Setup is a mainstay, and unfortunately I couldn't afford a scavenge, so we had to skip it this time around. Uh, Cornelius also has a simple game plan. His job is to speed up Zek and Reginald, and he's going to be doing that with uh, Yellow Scroll of Speed and Blue Scroll of Speed, respectively. Uh, yellow Scroll of Speed starts in our opening hand because it's an 8, but Blue Scroll of Speed does not, which is why we'll be fetching it out of the deck with Bookworm and placing that on Reginald. Uh, Cornelius also has two Scrolls of Intellect in his starting deck, which is unbelievable. Those are, uh, we upgraded to make innate, and one of them is going to go to Reginald, one of them is going to go to Zek. With uh, any leftover cards, because we'll be drawing uh, seven, a hand of seven, because of Expert Tracker from Andrin, we'll be trying to put some wet on the uh, on the enemies if possible. Uh, so that's Cornelius' game plan. Then Reginald also has a simple job, is to put Bless on Zek. We're going to do that with Benediction and Divine Grace. We're going to be uh, also trying to put some Inspire on Zek with Clarity, with Fortune Telling for Deck Manipulation as well, and Scry Scry can Deck Manipulate Zek. Any uh, spare cards on Reginald will be using uh, Reigns to put Wet on the enemies to prime them for cold damage. We picked up the Fanaticism in the uh, um, Divinations, and we also found this Gloves of Agility in the shop. This completely blanks the damage dealt from Fanaticism, so this uh, does nothing, gives us two energy for um, zero input, which is great. Then Zek. Uh, Zek is uh, going to be our damage dealer, and uh, he's going to start off typically with five energy, because he receives a scroll of intellect from Cornelius. And with that five energy, we're trying to do Frost Nova, launch some free Ice Lances, launch some rains uh, before that, and then shatter. And if there are any enemies still alive, which is probably not going to happen, we can always uh, malicious eye them down. And then as a contingency plan, we're playing this life tap. We're not playing, planning to play it in every single battle, but if we do need to get up to seven energy, uh, then we have this uh, life tap available to us, at which point we could say, you know, shatter, shatter, black death, for example. If we really needed to get to eight energy, we could actually put both of these Scroll of Intellects onto Zek rather than one on Reginald and get uh, Frost Nova, Shatter, Shatter. I don't think we'll need it, 
but it's nice to know that we have different uh, combinations available to us. Um, Zek has two unstable powers, just in case we need powerful uptime, because we need to uh, get to seven as much as possible, or at least six. And in the shop, I also picked up uh, leather gloves on Zek, which is going to be great for, for powerful redundancy. So that's our game plan. Um, Chant of Initiative, two scroll of speeds, uh, scroll of intellect, rain, rain, bless, bless, inspire, wet, uh, frost nova, shatter, simple. So with that in mind, uh, let's also cover the, uh, the perks. On Andrin, we went golden shards like usual. We're playing Chant of Initiative and picking up the forest crown at the triad, which is why we went fast. Uh, we're potentially playing Rupture, Captivating Voice, and potentially Wolfie, which is why we go slow. We picked up those Benedictions and we'll be playing Wild Hunt, so we picked up this uh, Mark perk. And potentially Ballad of Evasion in the late game, in case we go to turn 2 against Hans and Archon, so we went uh, Evasion and Buffer. We went with a bit of Sight and Sight Dispel Stealth, just in case we go to turn 2 in Act 2 or 3 and there are units that stealth themselves so we can still get the... Uh, uh, the excellent combat rating. And speaking of stealth, uh, Zek is going to stealth himself, but is quite perk um, heavy. So Andrin's going to chip in and make stealth do 25% increased damage instead of 20. And then lastly, uh, Andrin, we're playing Uproot, potentially Wolfie in the late game. And so we're doing a, an additional vulnerable charge on uh, Andrin. For Cornelius, I went full Golden Shards. We are playing those scrolls of speed, so we perked fast. Uh, we need to make Cornelius himself as fast as possible, so we went the full way down this speed tree. We might be playing Shock Nova, so I went slow. And then in the elemental tree, Cornelius is going to be chipping in with chill application, so we went the whole way down this tree, as well as some cold damage. He'll be applying wet with rains, and uh, we want uh, Cornelius to draw a hand of seven, so we're going to go with Inspire Draws 2. Okay, for Reginald, we are going to be playing um, full gold and uh, shards. We're going to be doing uh, making him as least slow as possible, going full speed. We'll have vulnerable maximum charges increased by one from Reginald. He has a few spare perks, so we'll have him do the wet increases cold damage by one, uh, as well as the inspire draws two perk, which I really like on support heroes. We'll do blessed for obvious reasons. I had a few spare perks, I'm not sure that this was completely required. And really we don't, we're not actually using Reginald as that much of a healer, so it didn't perk much here. You might be looking at this page and thinking, why on earth are you going with three dark charges on Reginald? And the answer to that question is Zex level three, Dark Feast. At the start of your turn, for every eight dark on Zek, you can reduce the cost of cards in hand by one, and Zek's gonna have a lot of cards in his hand. Uh, Zek himself applies one dark to himself at the start of the turn, which we're going to increase to two with uh, this dark perk here. And then Reginald is going to be casting a Shadow Mend, a yellow one, on uh, Zek, which will apply three. But that's going to increase by three because of the uh, perks that we put on Reginald. So that Shadow Mend is going to do six dark on Zek. Then Zek, at the start of his turn, will apply an additional dark to himself, getting himself to eight and Pestilent goes before Dark Feast, so the Dark Feast is going to count eight uh, Dark between the Shadow Mend and Pestilence, and then Zek's cards will all be reduced uh, by one. So that's the game plan here, is to have Reggie cast uh, Shadow Mend on Zek, and then give him a hand of potentially up to ten discount, because we'll have Zek uh, starting with a hand of ten in some cases. So that's the, the cool little gimmick, the game plan of uh, why we're going down Dark Feast. And those are, are Reggie's perks. Uh, as it relates to Zek, um, we're actually going 15 speed um, on Zek. So if I look at the character sheet here, he's 15. And if we made Zek 16, Zek would actually be too fast because Reggie is at 13. And Cornelius, if you remember, is doing going to do a scroll of speed. One on Reggie, the four fast, and one on Zek, the three fast. So Reggie's going to get up to 21. And if Zek was a base speed of 16, that he's too fast with uh, the, the, the second scroll of speed. So we had to only make Zek 15 for that reason. Uh, we spoke a little bit about how we're going to use stealth for, to increase the damage on Zek. We are going powerful, increases all damage by 10% per charge. We're playing cold Zek, so these should be self-explanatory. 
we'll be applying a bit of wet ourselves. So we put a, a wet. Uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of shadow damage ourselves. So we went up this tree and then, of course, uh, bless doing one and a half uh, damage per charge, but uh, no longer increasing healing received. So with that in mind, uh, let's head out of town. I, you can see I have 672 gold. And that is because uh, we are going to go straight into the caravan. And then on Zek, we're going to buy this uh, frozen orb for 551, which is a great pickup here. And now we're ready to rock and roll. Um, before we do jump into this first fight, uh, let's just quickly touch on the, the high score pathing again. You can see that we're going to go uh, across to the town outskirts, up here to the lost sheep, uh, up here. We're going to uh, fight the farmer here, jump into the hatch, go north, fight the imp, fight Belfiore, pop out of the rift, jump down to Otis, come up here to the forest border, down to the river path, uh, fight the dryad, and then up to the settlement, and then up onto Yilmeh. So uh, I'll see you in uh, fight one to see if we can OTK. As I mentioned in the intro, very simple game plan for Andrin. We're trying to chant of initiative, Cornelius, an expert tracker, Cornelius. We'll get rid of the bookworm because we see the second scroll of speed, so we don't need that. Cornelius speeds up Reggie Zek, giving a scroll of intellect to each and getting up as many reins as possible. Trying to give Zek as much inspire and bless as possible while putting as much wet as possible on the enemies. We need one unstable power on Zek to get him up to full powerful. Give Frost Nova, Ice Lance, and Shatter should get the job done. Not taking anything here, and we'll skip straight ahead to the Corruptor fight just before the Imp statue. We're up against Noxious Parasites, which is horrendous and <laughs> already screwing with us. We have low self-esteem in our decks as well. This is a very challenging fight. We have two Shatters in the deck, so we'll get rid of that one. Because we want to fuel Black Death, putting as many cards in the discard pile as possible. We really need to dig for cards on Zek, which is why we expert tracked Zek this time and not uh, Cornelius. Putting the tracker on Cornelius just wasn't necessary. Scroll of intellect for each of Reggie and Zek. We're gonna get a solid amount of uh, bless here on Zek between uh, Benediction and Divine Grace. rid of the low self-esteem and the hatch and clarity clarity should get Zek to full uh, inspire we unfortunately uh, redraw the low self-esteem probably could have played this slightly differently but I think we're gonna be okay we can't afford the black death but uh, looks like we're gonna be absolutely fine yes got through it We'll take the clarity here on Reginald and get straight into the uh, Belfield fight. All right, at this point we're level two, so you can see we have Wild Hunt there on Andrin. Not going to play it this round though. And we're going to have uh, Soul Harvest on Zek, which is a fantastic card. Mostly looking for single target damage here instead of AoE. scry ourselves just to make sure that we hit the the key cards perfect 
a lot of inspire, lots of bless, and some deck manipulation. Note that we have Heat Surge on Zek from the Boon, so we get extra energy. And drawing into the Soul Harvest. It's going to be fantastic for stacking up some chill. We always wet first. Get up to our full powerful. We have more than enough damage. Look at that. We'll take an Adrenaline here and then skip ahead to the uh, Yilmer fight. Wild Hunt is well placed this time, so we'll keep it. Really productive turn from Andrin here. Getting 15 mark on Yilmir. A lot of deck manipulation. Really setting us up nicely. Doesn't hurt. Both fiery shields hitting the boss. We'll scry ourselves to find the the key cards. We're really digging for soul harvest here. And I'm okay getting rid of the unstable power because we have full powerful from our items at this point. Six bless, and we're up to five inspire on Zek, which is fantastic. We'll hold on to the shatters. There's our soul harvest. We'll wet first. Look how much damage that's doing. Perfect. We'll take the Winter Orb on Cornelius, the Recurring Nightmare on Zek, and I'll see you shortly in Act 2 where we'll showcase the game plan when we're at level 3. As a quick reminder, this is the high score pathing. Uh, if I was building this for fun and for synergy, I would absolutely go through Feyborg because of Freezing Ink on Cornelius, but Velcrath and Aquafall are giving us the highest score. Uh, we're going to rejoin this run uh, just after getting into the uh, Black Forge, and we've hit level 3. Alright, so a couple of things to note. Firstly, you can see that uh, we're not in the Act 2 town. I've skipped ahead so that we can just get straight to the level 3 game plan. We just uh, got through the, the Black Forge, and I'll cover the decks and the equipment in a second. Uh, the second thing to note is um, this run, I did it in January of this year and I'm recording this in April, going back to the game saves <laughs> and trying to figure out uh, what did I do again? Um, because a viewer request, requested Zek uh, Cold Carry, which is why I'm recording this. And um, one thing that was interesting to me is I was looking at the perks and I actually should have had this uh, chill perk instead of this um, shadow. So if you're wondering why there's slightly less chill on, on Zek, uh, that's why that should definitely be chill, chill not shadow. Uh, secondly, on Cornelius, this should definitely be a slow and not a um, vulnerable. I have no idea what happened. I'm trying to remember. But if I was redoing the run today, uh, that's definitely how I would perk, which is how I um, set it up for the intro. But just wanted to note that uh, we should be having more chill than we currently have on Zek. Uh, so with that in mind, we held a few levels level ups so that we could reshuffle um, going into the forge, which is why these two are not leveled up. Uh, but let's quickly cover the decks and the equipment. So Andrew, we picked up an extra adrenaline. Uh, note, we have a corrupted captivating voice. Technically, we can captivating voice and ballad evasion on turn one. 
it's quite rare though. We we definitely need to get the chart of initiative off on Cornelius, so this interaction doesn't really come up. We picked up a scavenge on the way here, which will be changing to yellow as soon as, as soon as we can. And otherwise we remove one chant of initiative because we have pretty good redundancy uh, in the deck. Uh, Cornelius was still on the bookworm scroll of speed plan for speed control. We bought an additional scroll of intellect, which will eventually upgrade. We have an additional frost nova and we bought some transmissions just to give Zek some more uh, energy and inspire. On Reginald, we have this divine power, which is a fantastic card. And if you've watched any of my videos, you'll know it's one of my favorite cards. And we also have the, um, the Shadow Mend. And this is what we talked about. The Shadow Mend, because of Reginald's perks, applies six dark. And we're going to be giving that six dark to Zek to proc uh, Dark Feast on turn one. Just be careful with Reginald if you're trying this. You should not Divine Grace after Shadow Mending. You should absolutely Divine Grace before because we do not want to dispel the... This is actually a buff, the Dark on Zek. For Zek, we bought this Cold Snap. Uh, we have an extra invisibility. I really like this before Shatter or before Recurring Nightmare. It's really good value for one energy. Uh, we have this Squall. And I think otherwise, um, things are pretty much the same. Uh, from an equipment standpoint, we got this Wall Banner, um, which functionally is not that different, honestly, from the normal Wall Banner, the Corrupted version. And we have a Rifty on Zek. Reginald, nothing has changed. Uh, for some reason, we have a Corrupted Woolly Hat and a Corrupted Ball of Wool on Cornelius. Actually, this Cold Book, though, is going to be really valuable with all our reigns. And on Andrin, we have this Magic Tome just for an extra uh, card draw. So that's the uh, setup. I honestly have no idea if I went north or south. <laughs> trying to remember where I went. Um, but I'm just going to actually go south here to show the level 3 game plan. And I'm deliberately selecting this Corruptor because all of their enemies uh, have their resistances boosted. So they're all in and around, you know, 84% cold, 94% cold, 95% cold, 95% uh, uh, cold here. So just wanted to show that um, uh, as a caveat. And we'll be actually going um, a bit deeper into some of the tactics during this fight. So you can see here, I've traced on turn one, I see a deflect, a setup, and these cards. And typically if I see this, if I see a deflect and a card that I really want in the form of setup, then I will actually just restart the fight because I've essentially wasted two looks with uh, our trace. And I'll show you what I mean here. So I know that the top two cards are deflect and setup. So I can just vigilance into those because I want this anyway. Now I can trace and I can say, okay, what, what do I want from, from here? And in this instance, uh, maybe I want to get rid of these two so I get an extra look. So now I can Vigilance like this. I can set up. I can put this Adrenaline back. I can Chant of Initiative Cornelius. And now I have this extra energy from Adrenaline. Whereas if I had done the original game plan of just Tracing at the start, I would not have been able to dig that deep to get rid of the extra card that I just couldn't see the first time around, if that makes sense. so. That's just something that I'll do is if I know that the top two cards or the top card is one that I always want, then I'll restart the fight, draw with Vigilance, and then uh, trace after that so that I can uh, look uh, deeper. Here we're going to um, Expert Tracker uh, Corn Dog, and we have a very good seven, so we're going to keep all of this. And then we're going to trace um, Reginald. And I think I can get rid of these flash heals because we already have three healing spells on the top of the deck already to proc the level three. So we just get rid of this. We we uh, we don't need those. You'll see that Zek is on low health, and that we we're deliberately doing that because Reginald's level three uh, gives bless to the most damaged hero when you play a healing spell, and we're getting Zek low by just actively life tapping. Sometimes we don't even need to life tap. We just want Zek to be on low health so that he can constantly benefit from um, Reginald's level three. So that's why Zek is at uh, low health. Okay, so with Cornelius, we're going to scroll of speed Zek. We're going to bookworm. We obviously need to get the scroll of speed on Reginald as well. We're gonna rain and draw a card. I think in this case, I want a transmission uh, Zek. We'll frost over the enemies to start building up some resist reduction. We'll put a scroll of intellect on Reginald so that he gets the draw seven and we'll put the final scroll of intellect on Zek. Now on Reginald, uh, we're gonna uh, use clarity on Zek, another clarity. 
we will uh, divine grace first because we don't want to dispel the um, the dark. We'll uh, get all of our level threes off, and you can see that um, Zek is on twelve bless. We're going to scry Zek, and I'm going to be quite aggressive with this scry because I want cards in hand that cost energy to get the discount. And we also know that we have a cold snap in the deck. So I'm going to actively, even though I love Shatter and Frost Nova, I think I should actively um, ditch these two, maybe keep the Frost Nova, but definitely ditch Shatter because we're going to get a nice discount if we uh, draw into the cold, the cold snap. So that's what I'm speculating on here. All right, passing the turn to Zek, we have our very resistant enemies. And um, to start with, I'm going to rain before Sol Harvest, because I would like to at least build up um, a little bit of uh, wet. And now I can uh, Sol Harvest. I'm going to start with a Squall to get more wet on the enemies. Then a Frost Nova to build up some chill. Then another rain to build up some more wet so that's going to do more damage. Now you can see I can play Cold Snap for free. We're going to get back, mm, I think, a Squall and a Shatter. I think we have the energy. Yeah, we're in good shape on energy here. So we'll squall again to get even more wet. And what we can do here is probably Ice Lance this guy who's quite resistant. And you can see we have a free invisibility. So I can do this and then shatter. And you can see against the hardest corruptor, we have an insane amount of damage. We can finish the choice. We can finish our fight in a multitude of ways here. We can invisibility shatter. We could invisibility black death. We have some recurring nightmare damage. And uh, this just goes to show um, just how powerful this can be with all the discounts. We effectively got five, six energy for free there because of um, uh, Zek's uh, Dark Feast. So that is just a, a more in-depth overview of what we're trying to do at level three. Very, very powerful uh, to get that much of an energy discount as well as the discounts that you get from a uh, Cold Snap. And even against the Counter Corruptor, we have a ton of damage and a bit of damage diversity. We had this recurring nightmare and we have our Black Death uh, just in case. So hopefully that's helpful to see what uh, the level three looks like. We're going to skip straight to the Ignido fight, as you can see, and um, just talk a little bit more about the combinations of play that we can have. So let's start with a, a trace on ourselves. We see a chant. We don't need this extra adrenaline. We have one in hand already. I like the rest of these and we can actually still get to set up uh, using this because we can Vigilance. We have this magic tome here so I can do this. Vigilance, um, Chant of Initiative, Cornelius, and then we draw from the tome that gets us into the setup territory. We don't need this Ballad of Evasion. We can Adrenaline. Unfortunately, the mark is building up on the spike. Ah, okay, at least we got some on the boss. And now we, we've talked about how important Shadow Mend is to enable the discounts on Zek. And in theory, we could always trace Expert Tracker Reginald. Technically, Cornelius doesn't have to have a hand of seven. So uh, we can, if we're really feeling nervous about it, so we can't find it, we can always just trace Expert Tracker to basically guarantee it on Reggie. Our other options within Reggie's deck, we have two scries. We have three flash heals and we have an expected prophecy. So if we draw any combination of a scry or any of these four cards, we can just scry ourselves as Reggie to find the Shadow Mend. So the redundancy, um, the fail rate is basically zero to find Shadow Mend in my, in my experience. So with that in mind, I'm just going to expert tracker Corn Dog. We don't need this uh, Shock Nova, so I'm going to ditch that. And then we'll trace uh, Reginald. And I think we can probably get rid of these three, keeping a scry and a, a fortune telling. Uh, so again, no Shadow Mend in the top. Um, we picked up this Quill. It's not quite Fountain Pen, um, but it's gonna do a nice job here. These, uh, the spike is quite fast, so we do need to obviously still um, chant, um, sorry, scroll of speed these guys so that we're quicker than the enemies. And the uh, Quill propped on Reginald, so he already has an Inspire. I do not need to scroll of Intellect Reginald anymore. I'm just gonna scroll of Intellect Zek, Transmission Zek. And then I have a choice to make here um, around Frost Nova or um, Transmission. 
I think I'm just gonna frost over to start building up some status. I think that's touch and go. Okay, so on um, Reginald, we obviously do not have the key cards. So I am gonna just do exactly what I said and scry myself. And you can see the key cards are um, at the top here, Divine Power and Shadow Mend. So I'm gonna get rid of these. And we have two um, flash heals. So we're gonna heal other heroes that aren't uh, Zek to start proccing the level three. We're gonna heal uh, Andrew again. We're gonna Divine Grace before we Shadow Mend so we don't dispel. We're going to um, Shadow Mend like this, uh, Divine Power. We can't unfortunately afford the fortune telling but somehow I think we're going to be okay. And uh, now we'll pass to Zek. We'll proc our discount. All right, so to start with, we will Soul Harvest and start building up some status. I think we're going to go with Ice Lance first. Then follow it up with an Ice Lance. And an Ice Lance. What an amazing card. Um, the level two Soul Harvest. Incredible value. And you can see the boss is already very, very low. I think we're gonna frost over again. And uh, we can cold snap back a frost nova just to get some more status. And then uh, invisibility shatter, and then finish it off. We could <laughs> we could probably black death uh, and then play recurring nightmare for a bunch. Uh, so there you go, Ignido down. Feels very smooth. And um, I'll see you in the uh, next act where we'll go over the, the level four game plan. We've looked at level two, we've looked at level three, and we'll cover level four in the next act. As a brief reminder, this is the high school pathing to maximize school. And we'll rejoin the run just in the spider lair when we've hit level four. All right, so as you can see, we've uh, skipped ahead a little bit. We're uh, level four, we're in act three, and we're straight in the spider cave. So a quick update uh, here. On Andrin, we um, have this silly uh, repost, and that's because we had to um, fail this roll to land. We wanted to land down here in the collapsed ground and not at the cave entrance, because that gives us an extra corrupt to fight for more score. So we don't want the event. So in order to do that, um, I hold the level ups of the characters uh, so that we can fail this roll and if you level up the character, it shuffles the deck. So it gives you a couple of tries at this uh, roll here, which is why Android has this repost and Cornelius has this world in flames. I'll be removing uh, both of those at the uh, earliest opportunity. Otherwise, the plan is quite consistent. We have a we're hoarding a couple of Ballad of Evasions. We have a Healing Serenade just in case we're uh, nervous about the Hydra. And we're saving these also for the final two bosses already. On Cornelius, the game plan is pretty much the same. We upgraded a, a scroll of intellect. We have this equivalent exchange. And uh, as I mentioned, we'll be getting rid of this world of flame, world in flames as soon as possible. Reginald, we didn't have to uh, do his level up. We, we managed to fail the roll before that. So luckily we don't have either of these terrible cards right now in Reginald's deck. Um, worth noting is that we have a master spell. Again, I'm probably being a little bit too defensive here. I'm not sure we, we need this. Uh, but we have this just in case and uh, Celestial Brilliance. And so Celestial Brilliance, <laughs> why on earth is this in Reginald's deck? Uh, and that's because we're very, very afraid of Thorn's Proliferation, which can completely ruin the run. Uh, our Andrin is going first. So even though we do have Uproot to get rid of Thorns, we're just playing so many cards on Reginald and Cornelius that Zek will probably uh, Thorns himself to death without further tech. So that's why we're playing Celestial Brilliance um, on Reginald, just as a contingency plan. Then on Zek, we have this Blizzard. Um, I was umming and ahhing whether to have a Blue Cold Snap to get this back for cheap, but then we picked up a, a Vampiric Tutor. Uh, this is going to be amazing. We're going to try, if possible, to get Blizzard for free. And Vampiric Tutor is also really helpful because we actually lose HP to make sure that Zek stays the most damaged character for Reginald's level three. So between uh, Life Tap and Vampiric Tutor, we can make sure that Zek is always quite low. And as you can see, Zek is also level four. So we have this um, Death's Embrace, which will transfer our damage to 
uh, transform our damage to cold, which will also work on Black Death, which is going to be incredible because Black Death does an amazing amount of base damage. And again, I'm so scared of Thorns that, <laughs> that we're also playing Drain Life if for some reason we can't get off this Celestial Brilliance. Drain Life, we can convert it to uh, cold with Death's Embrace. And um, this can essentially be a full heal. We might be at like 10 health and this will just, if it's converted to cold, will just get us back to, to full. We picked up a Shatter on the way, which will change to yellow at the earliest opportunity. And otherwise, I think um, the rest of the deck is self-explanatory. Uh, from an equipment standpoint, um, we have a lot of powerful uptime redundancy on Zek. We picked up uh, this um, Eldritch Sword. We have our Mixed Salad on Reginald. Uh, we, of course, have our Quill on Cornelius. We found this Eldritch Ring, a Dimensional Crystal at the Rift. And then on Andrin, we have a Stimulant Pills, which is going to be fantastic uh, for speed control. Uh, one thing that's worth noting is against the Hydra, you can see uh, Cornelius is a uh, 14 base speed. Uh, our Chantler initiatives at the moment are granting five fast. So that would put um, Cornelius at um, 24 speed. Now against the Hydra, if we can get uh, Cornelius an extra two speed from somewhere, whether that's from an item or even more fast, Cornelius could actually go before the uh, Hydra that makes itself invulnerable and would open up us up to uh, one turn kill potential. So that's something I'm always on the lookout for is can our slower get up to 26 speed between the uh, speed control that we have and the base speed? And if so, then we can probably OTK the Hydra. If not, then we're going to have to take a few hits from the Hydra. Uh, so that's something I'm always on the lookout for. Uh, for this passage of play, I'm going to cover these two fights, the cave passage here and the cave center here. And what I'd like to do is maybe just go into a little bit more detail of the um, micro decisions and tactics that optimize turns. We may restart the fight a couple of times just to demonstrate. Uh, so that's what we'll plan to do. We'll do a bit of a deeper dive rather than just sailing through. And um, we'll talk about some of the decisions that we have to make. And the first decision is right now. We are up against Thorn Proliferation which we're, we're teching for. And we can either take a free upgrade or an exotic shop. What I do like to do is I like to save the game and I will typically check the shop. And if we have an unbelievable item, then we'll proceed with the run. If there's nothing there, then obviously a free upgrade is also great value. So we can reload, rewin the fight and take the free upgrade after checking what's in the shop. So uh, that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna select the shop first and uh, I'll see you in this fight where we'll go through some of the the tactics um, of how to get through this. Okay, we'll kick things off with a trace, just like we always do. And we see two cards on the top that we're quite interested in. Um, I would like to draw into Adrenaline, so I'll keep Scavenge, and then we can ditch Setup, Scavenge it back, and then draw into the Adrenaline. Uh, because we're going to have to spend two energy to get these cards, I think ditching Wild Hunt is a, a fair decision here. So we can Vigilance, Vigilance, scavenge back the setup. And then we can draw, and we draw, unfortunately, into Ballad of Evasion here. So I can Adrenaline, I can Chant of Initiative, Cornelius. And now we're in a position where we can Trace, Expert Tracker, and then Uproot at the end of the turn, which is not bad. But instead, what we can do is we can actually reload this combat. We know the top two cards are cards that we want, so we'll do the same thing as we've discussed. We'll Vigilance, Vigilance first. Now when we trace, we can see the, the Ballad of Evasion that we do not want to draw. So we'll still ditch Wild Hunt. We put Setup in the discard pile. And now when I get back Setup, we're going to draw into another Scavenge, which is much better than this Ballad of Evasion. So I can Scavenge. We'll draw our three cards. We can put a scavenge back. We can chant of initiative Cornelius. We can adrenaline. And now we're in the same position that we were before, but instead of that ballad of evasion, we have an extra scavenge. So we have a few more choices. We can scavenge back a setup and keep going through the deck. But to be honest, there's not much in the deck that we really want at this point. We can scavenge back a chant of initiative if we want to speed control up another character. Or we can trace and then scavenge back a trace for more deck manipulation. So we just get a free extra trace from changing the way we played there. 
I am going to trace. I'm going to trace Reginald to begin with. And on Reginald, we would like to cast Celestial Brilliance, which is an expensive card. So I think that we get rid of Divine Power. And then I like the look of everything else here. And uh, hopefully we have enough deck manipulation to find the Celestial Brilliance. So I'm going to do it like this. Now I can scavenge back the trace. And we will trace uh, Zek this time. And because we have a uh, Cold Snap, I'm not averse to uh, putting Shatter and Squall into the discard pile. Um, be a bit aggressive to get some Cold Snap value. So I'm going to do that initially. We can always go back and make a different decision if it doesn't work out. Then I'm going to Expert Tracker Cornelius. And I really like Transmission. But in this case, Colin is 23 speed. And after we speed control up Zek and Reginald, they'll both be at 21 which can in some instances be devastating because Colin can cast a mass slow. So he does not, but I still don't really want him to go first. So I would like to slow down Colin to be slower than 21. And there are two ways to do this in Cornelius's deck. We can either Shock Nova, which is the obvious example, or we could Frost Nova, which would slow Colin by one because of five chill. It reduces the speed by one. But we also have this Dimensional Crystal so if we can cast a Frost Nova first, then we'll copy it and be able to slow them down by two. So I am going to get rid of this transmission and speculate on that and then finish the turn with an uproot because we do not want Cornelius to hurt himself too much because we want Healing Surge to proc on Zek and not any of the other characters. So to begin with, we're going to thin the deck with Bookworm. We will uh, cast this um, Scroll of Intellect on Reginald, because he's going to need a lot of energy. And you can see we drew into that Shock Nova. So we could just cast this and get Colin slow. It would duplicate the Shock Nova, and we could keep rolling forward. Or instead, we could uh, Scroll of Speed to keep drawing with our Quill. And now we've drawn into that Frost Nova instead of the Shock Nova. So I can actually uh, get the right status and the damage on the enemies, which can be good for Zek. And here I have another interesting choice. If I want to do more damage to the enemies, I should rain first and then Frost Nova. But that would actually do three more damage to Cornelius, which we really don't want him to be low at all. So instead of doing more damage to the enemies, I'm going to save some health on Corndog. You can see he's already down to 68 there and rain after the, after the Frost Nova. We need to give Reginald an Inspire to draw seven. We're going to put the Scroll of Speed on Zek give the rest of the Inspire and the energy to Zek. And we're going to equivalent exchange Reginald because he's going to be playing some expensive cards this turn. Yeah. So now we're passing over to uh, Reggie. And you can see we have nine cards in the deck and we drew uh, some really nice card draw here. We drew Flash Heal, Carrot, and Expected Prophecy, which collectively is a five card dig. So I'm going to start with Scrying myself and Zek has got four Inspire, so we're going to get rid of all this stuff. Um, I like fortune telling here. And this gets us down to exactly five cards in Reginald's deck. So between these three cards, there's a five card dig. I know I'm going to get Celestial Brilliance. So I'm going to start with, I think, healing uh, Andrin's a little bit more um, in danger than uh, Cornelius to make sure that the, he you can see the healing search propped on Zek. We're going to draw the carrot. We're going to draw their expected prophecy here and uh, we'll put the Master Spell back. And now I have another interesting choice where, when do you play this card? So normally I, I would save this right till the very end and purge all the thorns, pass the carry, and the carry can pop off uh, without doing much damage to themselves. But in this case, because we're applying eight Sanctify to all the enemies, if Zek heals to full, which he probably will do if we save this to the very end, that would be very bad for the next fight. We still want Zek to be the most damaged character if possible. So there's a really interesting choice here where I think I might actually just play this now. You can see the Sanctify on all the enemies here. I would like to heal up uh, Andrin to proc again Healing Surge on uh, Zek. And uh, I think we'll, we'll Benediction Zek and hopefully that, yes, we do get the last proc on Zek here. We would, of course, uh, well, Fanaticism. We would, of course, um, Divine Grace before we Shadow Mend so that the Dark goes on Zek. And then we can Scry uh, Zek. Uh, this honestly looks pretty good at this point. And we can Fortune Telling Zek uh, as well. Um, 
maybe we'll get rid of uh, an ice lance um, to see how we go. So let's see how this works. I'm okay with a, a bit more thorns ac accumulating because we kind of want a Goldilocks um, Zex health. We can't, he can't kill himself <laughs> and he can't heal to full. We need him to be somewhere around around here. So that's the, the goal here. So why don't we start with a uh, rain and then we can death's embrace. And then we will start with a, I think a soul harvest and we'll launch uh, one of these maybe. We'll do another rain. And we drew into Blizzard, which I'm, I think this is gonna do too much damage, I think. So um, I'm kind of okay with this. What I'm actually gonna do is Vampiric Tutor into a Frost Nova here, I think. And I'm okay with Frost Novaing. Yeah, look at, look at, look at Zex Health, that's quite funny. And here, I think that we go uh, Ice Lance on this guy. It's quite resistant. Um, I think that we go a recurring nightmare on this guy. Now, again, we're we're kind of precariously <laughs> hovering around. I think that we go uh, invisibility and then shatter. Yep. Okay, we're we're <laughs> we're in the right zone. We could heal to full, but I, I really don't want to do that. So uh, what we can do here is we can finish off with a Black Death, which is going to be converted to Cold. Lovely, and, and Zek is the most damaged character. Perfect, perfect. So he's not too high, not too low. He's just, just right. And um, I'm not going to take any of these cards, I don't think. And now we can check our shop. And in the shop, we happened upon another stimulant pills. So we talked about getting Cornelius up to 26 speed ahead of the Hydra. And the stimulant pills corrupting this is going to let us do that. So we're going to buy that on Andrin um, here, which is going to be fantastic. I also, uh, interestingly enough, find that gold is quite often the limiting factor at the end of the runs. And these days, uh, <laughs> I'm taking the shady deal pretty aggressively. I can't remember what I did on this run, but I, I strongly, <laughs> we, we have such good cards and we get so many free upgrades that uh, these days I'm quite aggressively uh, taking the shady deal um, just to get, you know, 200 gold could be the difference. Whereas the shards are almost superfluous in the, in the late game. So we'll exit uh, the shop here. I think, I don't think I want to spend 800 on this Emerald Star. So let's keep moving. And here we have another interesting choice. We can either again take a free card upgrade, which is great value, but removing cards from the deck is also gold equivalent at this stage. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to level up Reginald to put this silly holy symbol in Reginald's deck. And then I'll take the card removed so I can take it out. So we can take out the world in flames so we can take up the repost uh, as well. Uh, so let's jump into this fight. Okay, we're up against uh, Noxious, and it's already messing with us. Uh, as usual, we'll start with the Blue Trace. And these top four are no good. I do like Scavenge, Scavenge, and here's why. We'll uh, Vigilance, Vigilance. We'll Scavenge back up Blue Trace. Okay, we have Chant, Adrenaline Chant, and we want this set up in the discard pile. So if we do something like this, then I can Scavenge back the setup. Uh, we can draw. Okay, perfect. We'll draw. We'll draw with Chant of Initiative because of the tome. We'll uh, get an extra bit of mark. Okay, and now we can Expert Tracker Cornelius. Nice. We can get rid of this hatch. We don't need the Shock Nova because the fastest enemy is 21 speed. And we'll trace uh, Reginald. Uh, getting rid of this uh, Flash Heal, I think. Okay. Let's see how we go. We will thin the deck with Scroll of Intellect. We will Scroll of Speed Reggie. Scroll of Speed Zek. Give Reggie some energy, I guess. Uh, duplicate the Good Rain with Dimensional Crystal. Give some Inspire and energy to Reginald and the rest to Zek. Okay, so not a bad turn from Canelius either. 
we're going to scry Reginald. Looking for Bless, but fortune telling is great as well because we have Cold Snap on Zek and we want to deck manipulate Zek. Uh, we're going to do our best here to try and find the Bless. We'll heal up uh, Cornelius with the Tomato just a little bit. Um, okay, this is no good. So we'll Clarity, uh, Fortune Telling. We'll get rid of these Frost Nova because of the Cold Snap. Um, we'll do this. We'll Fanaticism, I guess. Shadow Mend. And we're not going to Celestial Brilliance because... Um, uh, we don't want to put too much Sanctify on the enemies because Zek will full heal himself and we need Zek to be the most damaged character. So no Celestial Brilliance because the Sanctify is going to screw around with our game plan this on this occasion. It's really just our Thorns tech. Okay, we have one, two, three, four, five um, spells in the deck. So Vampiric Tutor is guaranteed to find us this Blizzard. We can Soul Harvest, Squall, Rain, Blizzard, Rain, get a bit of a heal on Zek, uh, Ice Lance, one of these guys, Ice Lance, one of these guys, yeah, we just don't, we don't quite have the damage to clear, we're going to start taking damage, unfortunately, so what we can do is we can restart and do a few things a little bit differently, starting with uh, Andrin, so I know the top cards are bad, so what I'm going to do is Yellow Trace instead. And then after this Scavenge, there's another Scavenge, and then a Chance of Initiative, and then I think an Adrenaline. So I, I think I can get rid of this Scavenge, and then I can draw into the other Scavenge and the Chant, because I, I need both of these cards. Now I can Trace myself. I can get rid of these keep the adrenaline because i'm gonna i'm gonna need the energy i think i can scavenge back the setup okay perfect i can do this on cornelius yes put the battle of evasion back adrenaline and uproot and now instead of the trace that we had before we had a yellow trace before we basically swapped that for uproot to get more vulnerable on the enemies now I don't want to expert track a Cornelius this time. I actually want to do it on Reginald because we failed to find the bless that we need on Zek to do more damage. So we'll do it like that. Unfortunately, we suffer a hatch proc. We'll scroll of speed Zek. We'll uh, gamble, I think, and go for this. Thin the deck. Rewarded for the gamble. Um, we will give a bit more of the energy. And I think that Reginald probably needs one more energy to get his cards off at this turn and could probably give Inspire to Zek. So let's do it like that. Zek had a lot of energy last turn. Okay, we we got Carrot instead of Tommaso this time around. That's interesting that the uh, mixed salad uh, is RNG. Uh, you can change the outcome playing cards in different order. So we'll scry ourselves, we'll get rid of all this garbage. We will um, flash heal, corn dog, perfect. We can benediction, get more blessed now. We can carrot, excellent. Divine power, that's what we're looking for. We can uh, divine grace, shadow men. We're up to 17 blessed last turn. I think we're at like nine. And I think the same plan as last time is uh, probably gonna do it, so. Let's see how we go. We have one, two, three, four, five, six spells in the deck. So Vampiric Tutor is guaranteed to get Blizzard. We will Soul Harvest, Squall, Blizzard, Rain. Uh, get a bit of health back. And do this, do this. And now, yes, you can see that we would full clear. So we could just keep moving on. We could also uh, have life tapped ourselves just to lose a bit more health to be lower than Cornelius. Um, but what I think we can do if we're really, really trying to optimize is actually finish the fight with Cornelius healthier. So I'm going to restart again. And instead of going the uproot plan, I'm just going to try 
the old plan. So let's do this first, just to check. Okay, let's do this. We'll scavenge back our trace like we did the first round. We'll trace ourselves. Put all this in the discard pile. Get back our setup. Draw into um, Wild Hunt. We can Wild Hunt Cornelius. And now instead of doing, I can trace Cornelius, get rid of the hatch like this. And Expert Tracker, uh, Reginald, do the exactly same thing that we did last turn. Okay, okay. So now Cornelius, I think he ended on like 57 in the last, uh, in the last uh, round where we tried this. So let's do it like this instead. We'll give that, uh, we'll duplicate the reins to the shop over this time. We will give Zack his scroll of speed. We still need to give him, Reginald needed an extra energy. And then we'll shop him over for a bit of extra damage. Okay, so now we get the tomato. Again, that's kind of that's kind of interesting. So we can scry, get rid of all this crap, uh, flash heal, and now we can actually tomato uh, Cornelius again. So he's on 67 instead of 57. That's nice. We'll benediction Zek. We'll divine power him. We will divine grace and shadow mend. And yes, perfect. Okay, so this time around we did not get the um, cold snap. So maybe we keep uh frost nova that's what i'm thinking to, just to get the resist reduction we can't get it back for for free with uh cold snap so in the deck we have one two three four five six seven cards so this vampiric tutor is not a guarantee for blizzard so i think we're going to start with the soul harvest frost nova into the squall perfect okay now i can vampiric tutor to grab blizzard for free we squall, we blizzard, we rain. Yeah, perfect, perfect. So here um, we can uh, finish the fight now. Cornelius is a lot healthier. Zek is a lot lower. And this is actually not terrible because we're going to have an easy fight and then we're going to go into the Spider Queen and we get a heal off of the Spider Queen. And we actually don't want Zek to heal to full health. So we do want Zek to be a little bit low so that he still remains the most damaged uh, character. And Cornelius is just a little bit healthier. He would have been on 57. Now he's on 67. I don't think it matters uh, at this stage of the game, but I wanted to show this because it's a good example of some of these kind of micro uh, decisions and tactics that we have to make along a run. And sometimes these can be the explicit difference between a win and a loss of getting through a round. Uh, other times I find there's a butterfly effect where maybe that 10 health difference doesn't matter in this fight, but uh, avoids us from a hero death in a subsequent fight or two fights time. And I think it's classic kind of Dunning-Kruger where the more you play the game, the, the worse you realize you are at the game. And certainly from my perspective, there's a lot more optimization to get to tight uh, gameplay. These these one turn kill styles do feel a little bit samey, but I really do enjoy these kind of very, very kind of tactical um, challenges to optimize and these keep things different. So this is this fight's a good example of uh, why, why I have a lot of fun playing this style, even though it does feel a little bit, a little bit samey. All right, we have an absolutely sensational Hydra kill uh, coming up. It took me a little bit of time to figure out how to get a turn one kill, um, but got there in the end and let's go through it together. So we'll start with the trace. We'll get rid of these just to keep these uh, these two. More vigilance, vigilance, uproot for vulnerable application, and of course, chant up Corn Dog. Because he's Zek is nice and low, we deliberately kept Zek very low to proc Reginald's level three healing surge. We're going to expert track at Cornelius. I have to get rid of this rain, and I'm also going to have to get rid of this scroll of intellect to draw into the cards that I need to. We're going to trace Zek and just keep the shatter only. Unfortunately, Blizzard is on the top of the deck. We really wanted to vampiric tutor into this to make it free, uh, but we can't do that because it's coming first. Let's pass the turn to Cornelius. And of course, we scroll of speed Zek just like always. We're just going to scroll of intellect Zek just like always. We have to find our other scroll of speed for Reginald. 
We found it with Bookworm, but instead I know I can greed into the Scroll of Intellect and actually find the Scroll of Speed from the draw, which is pretty cool. Okay, next we're gonna Shifting Scroll because we have to get Shock Nova because the enemies are very fast, 25 and 24 respectively. We'll start off with a rain to duplicate that with Dimensional Crystal and then Shock Nova the enemies after our two characters. And of course, finishing the Scroll of Intellect on Reginald for the Inspired Trolls 2 perk. Now, after playing this a few times, I know that the next card in Reginald's deck is a Fanaticism, and then after that, an Expected Prophecy. So we're gonna draw into that. We're gonna Divine Grace uh, Zek. We are going to scry ourselves such that we have three cards left, getting rid of all this. We'll have three cards left in, Reg in Reginald's deck and put the Celestial Brilliance back. Well, Clarity, well, Clarity. We're gonna scry Zek again and getting rid of all the cards that aren't Shatter, keeping these two because this is gonna be our AOE clear for these bosses. Well, Divine Power will Shadow Men to get Zek up to 17 uh, blessed total and then more fortune telling. And I need to get Zek down to 12 cards in, in this deck and you'll see why in a second. So I'm gonna get rid of the Recurring Nightmare and the Invisibility. He's now down to 12 cards in his deck. So we pass the turn to Zek. We're gonna start off with the Rain. Then we Death's Embrace, Soul Harvest, and then Cold Snap back the Squall and the Frost Nova, kicking things off with the Squall for the Wet application. We'll then Frost Nova, drawing into the Heat Surge and the Shatter. Our discard pile is now nine cards, and we would draw again. The next spell is gonna shuffle the discard pile back into the deck. So the last spell I'm gonna play to do that is Black Death because it deals damage equal to the discard pile. So this is the most damage that it can do right now. So let's cast Black Death. And there you see we've, we've triggered Exhaust. And now within our deck, we have one, two, three, four, five spells in our deck. So we can Vampiric Tutor, get the Blizzard, but because of Exhaust, it's gonna cost one, still very, very cheap. We can cast Blizzard, we can Ice Lance, Ice Lance. Shatter and Shatter for a turn one kill. Absolutely beautiful. Very, very nicely done. Hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Uh, we'll see you in uh, Act 4 for the Level 5 game plan. Just a quick reminder of the high score pathing, and we'll rejoin at the Twins where we'll be Level 5. All right, so as you can see, we're at the Twins and we're Level 5. Uh, let's quickly cover the game plan. So uh, on Andrin, what's changed? Well. I was a little bit worried about Vulnerable, so we went with this Expose Armor. We'll see how that goes. Uh, Andrin's equipment is the same. On Cornelius, we took the Storm Tiara from the Hydra uh, for wet application, and that's because we're gonna be playing Blizzard. You'll see in a second that Cornelius' deck is a well-oiled machine where we can get Blizzard every turn, and we're gonna double it with Dimensional Crystal. It's gonna be great. Reginald, we picked up this Sapphire Ring, and on the high scoring path, we always get the blobs. So we have a water blob on Reginald to multiply all of the wet from Cornelius's Blizzard. And we also changed a Rifty out for the ice blob on Zek to multiply all the uh, chill by 0.3 as well. In Reginald's deck, we found an extra divine power. We fought a Corruptor fight where the uh, reward was Demonic Tutor, which is incredible. And we picked up a couple of Meditates. We took out the Celestial Brilliance because Zek is now level five, so he heals himself. So we don't need the Thorns tech as badly anymore. And it's a very expensive card, so we took that out. And um, I very aggressively took out the uh, Master Spell. I thought, screw it, you know, we're not gonna need that. We'll just be uh, aggressive. So that came out on original two. On Zek, uh, from an equipment standpoint, we found a shop uh, where we picked up this Dimensional Crystal, and I already mentioned the Blob and we streamlined Zek's deck, took out the Squall, took out some Frost Novas, really streamlined it uh, down um, so that he uh, is a nice small deck. Uh, so let's just quickly cover this fight. I already knew there was an uproot on top of the deck. This was kind of a tricky one. So I'm actually gonna get rid of Expert Tracker here to get into a scavenge. We're going to draw the scavenge and the setups all the way at the bottom of the deck, which is a real pain. Now I can scavenge back the setup like this, uh, draw a couple of cards here, put the detection back. Uh, we will do this, we will uproot, we will make Cornelius faster, and we're gonna get back the Expert Tracker to start the Inspire Chain. 
We're going to slow the twins down a lot. So I actually don't need this scroll of speed. I'm going to ditch this uh, like this and pass the turn to Cornelius. Okay, so for Cornelius, we're going to start thinning the deck. We're going to get Blizzard into the discard pile, guaranteed because of Shifting Scroll. I can cold snap it back. And hey, there you go, Blizzard, with a uh, free uh, a free one as well from the, uh, from the Dimensional Crystal. We'll rain before we do the next Blizzard like this. We will Mana Gem, um, hand over some Inspiring Energy to our friend Zek. Make Reginald faster than Zek and give Reginald a little bit of energy here like this. Perfect. So we multiply all the wet with the blob, just like that. We're going to start meditating through our deck. We are going to put this not on Zek because we don't want um, buffer on Zek because we really want Zek uh, to suffer from dark. Uh, we're going to Benediction Zek. Perfect. We'll flash heal anyone that's not Zek. And we can fanaticism, expected prophecy back the uh, divine power here, demonic tutor into the divine power, which is uh, actually into the shadow mental. Let's do that. Let's do that. Perfect. Perfect. We will scry like this. I think we will put the shatter into the bin. We don't need that. Most likely, we will give Zex some more bless. We'll do another one of these. I don't think we need the recurring nightmare. We'll um, give Zek a bunch more powerful and bless. He's on 30. <laughs> That's absolutely ridiculous. And there you go, the dark for the discount. So uh, now he's suffered from dark. We're going to proc dark feast. And we multiply all the chill as well. Enemies before Zek is even gone. <laughs> There's a significant amount of chill. And we are going to play a blizzard. And that blizzard is going to be copied, which is pretty good. We can cold snap back our shatter and blizzard. I forgot to death's embrace, but somehow I think we're going to be a okay. Let's uh, black death. Yeah, that's a lot of damage. <laughs> could have played this way better, but I, I knew we had we had so much damage. I, I could just ice lance the, the guy down. Perfect. And now you can tell we're very, very strong. Very, very strong. I don't think I'm going to take any of this. Uh, let's keep moving. Ah, the dark one was, we have this frozen orb on Zek. <laughs> it's pretty bad. So I may well take this, uh, this dark one just for the damage, to be honest. Um, yeah, I think this is actually better because we have um, Death's Embrace that says for every dark you apply, apply to chill. And uh, this actually has dark on hit. So that could be interesting actually on Zek. So yeah, we're going to take the dark one and see how that works out. And I'll see you uh, shortly at the uh, final bosses. Okay, here we are at Hanshuk and uh, we have our uh, dark one on Zek, the more I think about it, the better I think this is going to be. And uh, I know there's a setup on top of the deck. Um, going to get rid of these, I think. I want to get Wild Hunt, start accumulating a lot of Mark. So let's do that. Perfect, perfect. There it is. So we'll Wild Hunt. We'll scavenge back the uh, setup like this. We'll draw into another scavenge, put the exposed armor back. Perfect, and we'll set up again. Adrenaline. There you go. That's a lot of mark and a lot of vulnerable. It's exactly why we were playing the the exposed armor for that for that reason. Uh, Corn dog. We don't need to do anything. His deck is perfect. So let's go on over to Zek, and I think we'll put both these uh, shatters in the bin and probably the black death as well. Actually, now that I think about it. All right, so then corn dog, do your thing. We're going to get the scroll of intellect. We're going to put the uh, blizzard into the discard pile. We're going to uh, speed up Zek. We're going to speed up uh, Reginald.
we're going to uh, keep chaining through these, just like this. Get a transmission, Reginald. Play the mana gem. It's energy here. Cold snap our blizzard back. And there you go. Blizzard, rain. Blizzard. Perfect. Multiply all the wet. All right, so I can actually, this is nice. I can broccoli, Zek. This makes him the most damaged character. <laughs> he has, uh, he's minus um, two. So we can flash heal kind of anyone else. Um, I think I'm gonna scry myself actually. Yeah, this looks pretty good, I think. Do it like this. Then uh, flash heal literally anyone else. Perfect. Uh, we can demonic tutor the divine power. We'll um, put some more bless on Zek. We will shadow mend Zek to get him up to six. Meditate, meditate. Give Zek some inspire like this. Fortune telling him. Um, I don't think we need this ice lance. Definitely want the recurring nightmare. Not even sure we need the the life tap. Maybe we'll, we'll keep it. We'll keep it and see how we go. Give him a bunch of. Bless. Lovely. Multiply our chill. We'll start off with the Death's Embrace. We will uh, Soul Harvest. I think we will Cold Snap back our two Shatters. Just make sure we remember to do that. And I think we should Dimensional Crystal. We have the Blizzard in hand, but let's just Dimensional Crystal that anyway. And draw our card. Okay, perfect. So let's Mana Gem, Life Tap. Let's double the uh, Blizzard. Let's uh, Ice Lance, I think. Love it. All right, now we can Vampiric Tutor <laughs> our Blizzard. And, and go again. Oh my god, this is so much damage. We will, I guess, shatters a bunch. We can just recurring night Visibility recurring nightmare is probably going to just do it. Yeah. Easy. All right. And that's hands. Okay. How about the Archon? Uh, let's take a little look at the decks as a reminder. This is uh, Cornelius's 15. This is Reginald's 18. And Zex, 17. Uh, we converted the uh, Shatters, obviously, to blue. Forgot to mention that before for the final bosses. And uh, I, I'm going to draw into a Chant of Initiative. I'm going to trace myself. Uh, we're in a pretty tough spot because the setup is on the bottom of the deck. So I have to ditch Expose Armor here. And you'll see why in a second. Okay, we drew into Scavenge. We're going to put the setup into the discard pile. We're going to scavenge back the setup. This was an extremely convoluted passage of play just to, just to be able to afford all of our cards. We're going to scavenge back the exposed armor. Okay, perfect. Now we've got the boss on a decent amount of vulnerable. We don't need the uh, scroll of speed because we are going to slow him down a lot so we can get rid of that. All right, so let's... Uh, have Corny, let's do his thing. We'll uh, discard Blizzard. Perfect, we'll cold snap it back. Very nice. Uh, we'll manage him. Just get this out of the way now. All right, we'll give energy to our friend Reggie. He's getting some um, Inspire ready from the Quill. Okay, perfect. We'll give him a bit more energy. Then we'll do uh, here on Zek. Okay, perfect. Multiply the wet. Oh, this is a rough, <laughs> this is a rough hand. And we got the carrot. We didn't get, we low rolled uh, on this. So let's scry ourselves. I think we can get rid of all of this. We're going to carrot. 
we are going to draw from our benediction. We're going to meditate. We can flash heal ourselves. Okay, perfect. So we drew into an expected prophecy here. And we can actually expect it back a divine power to the top. And demonic tutor that back for cheap. We're going to put some um, inspire to get Zek up to five. Weaken fanaticism. We can divine grace. Shadow men for the discounts. I'm going to scry Zek. Uh, this all looks very good, to be honest. I, I, I want to play and replay the shatter. Um, we can divine power. Yeah, this is actually the same. If I I can give him more energy, if we do it like this, it's the same bless, more energy. Okay, we're on 32 bless, seven powerful. Let's see. Uh, Let's see what we can do here. Let's start with the uh, Death's Embrace. And I think we vamp Tutor the Blizzard. And let's uh, play our Blizzard. Very good. We'll play the Blizzard again. And now we'll Soul Harvest. So we can do this. Okay, we can Shatter. We can shatter again and go back up to 10 energy and cold snap back uh, both our shatters. Okay, we can invisibility a shatter. We can shatter. We can invisibility this recurring nightmare. Some good damage. Awesome. Even though that wasn't the perfect turn, we still, <laughs> we still turned one the... Uh, the Archon with the Cold Zek carry. Pretty cool. The Dark One was an uh, awesome pickup. Um, yeah. Got him down. Very satisfying. So there we have it. Cold Zek carry. As a reminder, I, I wouldn't say this is a top, top tier comp. Um, there are definitely some vulnerabilities to the comp for high scoring, but that being said, it's clearly quite viable. Um, as a viewer, if there's anything you'd like to see done differently in the videos, feel free to make some suggestions. Clearly on this uh, video, we went a bit deeper into some of the tactics of the fights. If that's something you'd like to see more of, please let me know. Otherwise, I'll plan to uh, post the next high scoring video fairly soon. As always, thank you for watching. Take care and good luck in your Across the Obelisk runs.